All right, guys, it's finally time to celebrate hitting 2000 subscribers. Thank you so much for the support. We've had this channel for what a year and a half now, something like that. I think I've posted 57 RTC guides, something in that ballpark. It's been a wild ride, uh, but I just appreciate all the support. I left a, um, a post over on the community tab a few weeks ago, told you guys to leave me a comment. If you're supporting me on Patreon, you left your comment on Patreon and Discord. I've gathered up all those comments. I'm gonna go through them now or questions and I answer those. This will be a very laid back uh, video. I don't know how long it's gonna be. I'm gonna take my time and answer these questions thoroughly. So, you know, if you're currently trying to get a platinum in a game or you're driving to work or whatever, just treat it like a podcast um, and let's just go through these questions. Uh, I'm not gonna try to pronounce everybody's names because I know I'm gonna butcher them. Uh, but they will be on screen so you guys will be able to see that it was your question. What's your motivation or drive to make guides? What game has made you feel the most emotion once you finish the story? Um, motivation or drive? Man, I just love helping people. I don't know how to explain it. Since I was 15, man, I've just loved helping people. Um, I remember I had a, a friend of mine whose grandfather had a farm and, uh, you know, he had a cornfield basically. And, you know, one night I was just joking with and we were having a little, you know, get together, whatever, with some family and friends. And I said, man, I'll come and work for you. You know, I even do it for free because I wanted to help him. And uh, of course, he ended up paying me for it. But I ended up that was my first job. But my motivation for for, you know, helping him was not for the money. I just wanted to help him. You know, I just, you know, because he was basically talking about how. Uh, he couldn't really get good workers and all this kind of stuff. And at the age of 15, I was motivated to help this person, you know, not for a check, but to just help them. And it's always been my motivation. Um, I think that's why I love working retail so much. I did the retail industry for, God, it was probably like 10 years, 10, 11 years, something like that. Um, a lot of people don't like the retail industry because you're dealing with customers and, you know, customers can come in there pretty feisty sometime and sometimes they are, they have valid reasons and sometimes they're just being morons. Right. Um, but I love it. I loved retail. Um, but you really have to love helping people to do retail. And for me, I never really worked for companies. I mean, I did work for companies, but I'm talking about mentally. I didn't work for companies. I worked for the people. My job was to make sure the people, you know, got what they needed. And so that was my drive to go into work every day. It wasn't to get a check. It wasn't to work for a company. It was to service the people that was coming through my doors every day. And that motivation is carried through my entire life. And it goes into God making, right? Um, you know, I, I see a lot of gods on YouTube. And I'm not trying trying to say that I have the best guides on YouTube, but I've seen guides that there's no way that I would follow those guides because I know that content creator doesn't have me as their, if you want to call me their, their customer, they don't have me in mind. I know that they're just putting that guide up for quick views and they don't really care if I have a lot of questions or, uh, you know, if I run into any roadblocks trying to get through, they don't really care. You can tell it. And when I make guides, I put a lot of care into my work because I know that at the end of that, somebody's watching. And if my job is to really help them, then the guide needs to do that. And that's my motivation to continue to make the guides that I make. Um, and as far as the games that have made me feel emotional or the game that that's made me feel emotional, there's actually two. Um, Journey, Journey, man. I think every gamer should play Journey, even if it's not your thing, right? Um, it was weird. Journey was the only game that I've ever played where as I'm playing it, even though there's no dialogue, there's no, if you've played the game, you know what I mean? It's just music and mood. I could remember moments in my life, like memories, you know, um, times that I was mad at somebody, times that I was happy with somebody, you know, all these different emotions while I played this game. And, and at, even though I'm playing a video game in my mind, I'm reliving my life. And I think I even did a video on this on the old channel and talked about it, but it was so real to me 
that game and it shouldn't have been it's a little indie game you know it's a two hour story you know you know man it moved me in a way that that um that no other game has ever moved me is journey it's definitely one of my top 10 games of all time now the other game is final fantasy 7 but for different reasons and i'm talking about the original obviously i've played the remake i loved it well I don't want to get into spoilers with that game. I loved what they did with the game, but I was a little bit concerned about the ending, but you guys have heard me talk about that before. Uh, but the original, man, the original, when I played it, it was at a time in my life where uh, up to that point, me and my brother had always played Final Fantasy games together. Okay, It was like our thing. We played a lot of games together, but that, that was an experience. We would sit down, um, he was really good at like combat tactics. So he would come up with all the strategies and I don't know. He was really good at keeping track of what all the spells did. And for me, I was always overwhelmed by all that stuff, you know, but I was really quick with the buttons and the menus and stuff like that. So we kind of had our roles, you know, he would just sit over there and bark orders and I would just input commands and boom, we would just crush games. And Final Fantasy, the Final Fantasy franchise was was one of those games that, or one of those franchises that we just crushed. And we had played all the Final Fantasy games up to that point. And then my brother was at college. And I remember buying Final Fantasy seven and just looking at the back of the game, like the, uh, the back of the case, I was freaked out. I was like, there's no way I can do this, like not by myself. Like I need my bro here to tell me what to do you know what i mean and if you remember when final fantasy 7 came out it was just different man you know the scope of that game the fact that it was four disc was just just made me nervous you know what i mean and i fired it up i remember i didn't even get past the well i mean i got past the reactor portion but i'm talking about before i got to the to blowing up the first reactor I remember saying to myself, I can't do this. Like, I cannot do this, but I just pressed on, right? And I was taking notes. If you guys ever wonder why I take so many notes now, it came from playing that game. Final Fantasy VII was so pivotal in my gaming journey. Um, it just changed, changed the way that I view games, changed the way that I interact with games, right? And it was a week or two later, I beat it. I played it every day when I got home from school. I was doing like my homework on the bus, you know what I mean? Trying to make sure that when I got home, I had a full, you know, night that I could just play this game. And I, of course I crushed it on the weekends, right? Um, but I think it was a week or two later, I beat it. I think it was even a week later. I think I just went through it fast. I can't remember exactly, but it was definitely within two weeks. And I beat it on a Friday night and I cried I, and not necessarily from the story, although the story was really good and that might've played a part in it, but it was the fact that I had done something that I didn't think I could do. You know what I mean? Anytime you do something that you don't think you can do or somebody's telling you that you can't do, you tend to get emotional, you know? And, um, I remember just sitting there crying all through the credits and I didn't know what I was crying. You know what I mean? I was just crying. I was emotional and it, it only hit me afterwards. It was like, man, you did something that at the beginning you didn't think you could do. And that's why you were emotional. And then I just played the game again. You know, that, that night I beat it, the credits rolled. And as soon as I got back to the, uh, you know, the, the main menu there, I, uh, you know, wiped the tears away and went back at it again. And I said, now I'm going to perfect this game. You know what I mean? And I've probably beaten it. There was a time there where I would beat it every year. Um, I've probably beaten Final Fantasy seven, I don't know, 10 plus times at least. Um, so that's probably my favorite. That's probably the game that's made me the most emotional from, from, but it's different than journey. Journey was like a personal reflection of my life and you know, Final Fantasy seven was more of an accomplishment, right? So hopefully that answers your question. How do you make your guides? Like, do you follow your own path or do you look things up on the internet? Not accusing you or anything, just wondering the process. So when I first started making RTC guides, I never looked up anything on the internet. And the reason why was because when a game first drops, 
the information is is very misleading it's exaggerated it's not accurate because everybody's learning the game so you might go to a forum and there might be a, a guy that's like hey man here's 12 steps you do these 12 things the trophy's yours and you do those 12 things and then you get the trophy and then maybe you make youtube videos so you take that those 12 steps and put them in a video format and over time the community figures out that man, you don't need 12 you don't need to do the 12 things man you just need to do six all the other stuff was just stuff you thought you had to do right and so for me as a content creator to spend time trying to figure out those 12 steps for that particular trophy multiplied by an entire game would be a waste of time right so I, I just went into it blind and wrote my own guide and kept playing the game over and if there was 12 steps that I was doing to get the trophy I would test it so I would play the whole game again and try six steps and see if I still got the trophy and then I knew it worked and so but it took me forever to post content I remember talking to uh, another youtuber Dormouse 03 uh, she's actually a patron supporter as well she's probably watching this content I do need to talk to you on Skype <laughs> but um, you know she she gave me a wealth of knowledge one time you know we were talking and she said what are you working on for your channel and I forget what game it was but I told her and she was like have you been working on that for like months now and I was like yeah but it's not perfect you know it's not it's not the way I want it and there's still some things that could be better and this that and the other and she said you know at some point you just have to put it up you know you got to put the guide up otherwise you're never going to post and it hit me and I still live by that wisdom today right there's just there just comes a breaking point where you have to get the content out and that leads me to today so uh now i do look up things on the internet because i tend to cover games now on a backlog um some of you know what happened to my control guide you know i posted that guide probably i'd have to check the dates but it was definitely within 30 days after the game coming out so it was close to that release window and everything was fine with the guide until the dlc started to drop and it broke my guide the patch something it did with the patch broke my god and I had to pull it down from the internet or unlist it uh, now for me to go back and fix that god I would have to write the god over right so it's a waste of time it becomes a waste of time for me to cover games around the release window now um, because of patches and updates so because I'm kind of forced to wait to cover my gods on a backlog now I have the internet right it it, it, it from the day the game was released everybody was was learning the game now i have the internet at a point where we know the game right so it'd be like sitting in the middle of a library writing a book report and never touching a book you know just winging it you'd be silly so yeah if there's a game that's been out for four or five months and i'm about to write a guide for it, that's the first thing i do because i know that the, the information i'm going to be reading online is going to be very accurate because people have learned and of course i still come across that you know that um form that says you need to do 12 steps but then i just keep researching and then somebody's like no actually you don't it's only eight and you're wrong too it's only six then i go well it's one of those so let me test six and then if that doesn't work i'll test eight and then if that doesn't work i'll test the 12 steps right um, and so that's where I'm at now because like she said at some point you just got to get the guide up and when I sit down and make a guide now my goal is 60 days on a triple-a game I try to do it within 15 but it would have to be a game like uncharted for me to do it in 15 to 20 days when you get into a game like like I'm currently writing a guy for Ghost of Tsushima I mean I've been working on that guide off and on for like four months now but it's been patched several times and believe it or not some of those patches have broke my god so i'm glad i didn't release it you know and now i feel like it's in a really good state and i'm glad i waited because uh the new route that i'm making is so much more efficient and it's going to save you guys a ton of time the first day i started writing that guide again i saved you guys at least five hours the first day i went back to that guide because of the patches and where we are with the with the game now because the game is always evolving I have to be careful when I write guides because if I write the guide before the game has evolved, then there's a chance it could break my guide. 
uh, but I also have to get the content up fast. It can't take me a year, right? So yeah, if there's a video online that shows where all the collectibles are, I look. You know, if there's an interactive map for a game, I look. If there's, um, I guess another prime example would be a game like Dark Souls, right? Ceaseless Discharge. If you played that game, there's only two ways to beat that boss. There's, you know, trying to fight the hands or whatever. And then there's going back to the fog gate and doing the, the cheap trick. And so if I'm researching, which is what I do now, I spend at least a day or two researching before I even play. I want to know what I'm up against. Um, if I see a video that shows how to, you know, how to defeat ceaseless discharge and it's a, a one minute video, I'm like, that's the one I want to see. And as long as I feel like I can, I can have a beginner do that. Then why would I take the time to come up with a whole new strategy when it's just there and it's optimal. And if I don't show it and you find out about it, you're going to be like, why didn't you show this? Why did you show me the other way to beat ceaseless? It was tougher. And so you have to just kind of drop your, your ego at the door when you make guides, right? If somebody else comes up with a better strategy and their strategy is the best, then that's the strategy you have to go with or the community, right? The community of gamers. Uh, obviously I like to insert my own strategies in as much as possible. And a majority of my guides are my own strategies because there's a lot of gamers out there who are playing games, um, or I guess creating walkthroughs or guides based around skill level and I try to base my guides around playing smart right that's why if you've watched my guides they feel different than other guides you've seen online because those people are saying hey if you have this skill level you can get through this game and of course my guides require skill level too but I try to drop that down as much as possible so that everybody can get their trophies we try to play smarter right in every situation and that's what makes it a little bit different so i don't think you're gonna find um a copy of my god anywhere meaning like you're not gonna watch a dark souls 2 god that came out five years ago and then watch the one that i just posted and it's gonna be exactly the same because i don't copy guides straight you know what i mean but i do like to take sequences optimize boss fights um and insert them into my god uh, just so I can get the guide up a lot quicker. Um, there are certain games like, um, I think I covered a game on my channel called, well, I know I covered it, but I can't remember the name. It's either Meta Gal or Meta Girl. It's like a Mega Man ripoff type game. Those games, you will find a lot of similarities between other guides um, because there's only certain ways to get trophies. And I think there's a trophy in that game for dying to spikes or something or falling off a cliff and dying. So obviously, if, if you're in chapter one and there's spikes, that's where you're going to get that trophy. So if 10 God makers decide to cover that game, they're all going to get the trophy there or most of them will. Um, so that might look like content creators are copying each other. It might even look like some people have copied me if I post the guide first, but that's not necessarily true. It's just the obvious place to get the trophy. You're not going to wait till chapter five to die to the spikes. You know, you're going to do it in chapter one. So you may see some similarities, but I do not copy other gods. And no, I don't think you're trying to accuse me of anything. I know you, you've been friends for a long time. I know it can be a little bit mysterious. How does this dude sit down on a, on a, on, in the beginning of a month and then 30 days later pop out a god? It's because I'm putting in 14 hours a day. You know, I mean, that's really what it boils down to. And I'm taking all the knowledge I've gained from playing every game that I've ever played. You know what I mean? And all the research I've done and I'm just stockpiling it into a 30 day binge or maybe it's 60 days to come up with the gods. And then I move on. Then I have to do it again for the next game. If you were to gaze into a crystal ball, where do you see the video game industry heading in the next five to 10 years? Definitely digital distribution. Uh, I'm not saying that it's going to be 100%, but we're going to see a lot more uh, content being exclusively sold digitally. That's what I think. Um, it's a shame that that's where I can see it heading, but I think you'd be silly to say that it's not heading in that direction. I mean, we just saw HBO max. I know this is not the video game industry, but we just saw HBO max when they launched the Snyder cut, it wasn't in theaters. And I think their growth in their membership service went up. What was it like 68% or something digital, right? 
and you're going to see a lot more movies come out digital only right through membership services that's where we're heading and i think we're heading in that same direction with games money talks guys and i've always said this you vote with your wallet every time you buy a game you vote with your wallet and i look i bought my fair share of digital content but i guarantee if you come into my office right now you'll see that i have those games physically purchased as well i always do that you know when i especially when i cover games back in the day it was just easier for me to buy the game digitally and have it ready to play at midnight than have to go down to like my local walmart and hope that they could find me the game sometimes i'd wait two hours them trying to find the game right um i remember when uncharted the nathan drake collection came out it took me two hours to get that game i, I got there at 12 and i left at two because they didn't know what was going on right uh, if i'd have downloaded the game though it would have been ready for me at 12 because you can download it early right um so, but i've also purchased that game i actually just purchased it back at christmas the entire collection i always buy the physical version of the game because i want my i want my voting dollars to show either all physical or at least 50 50 because i do believe in an industry where we can have digital and physical i believe that there's room for both but the digital takeover right that's very appealing to publishers it's just easier for them they don't have to pay for you know shipping costs and plastic and wrapping games and shrink wrap and paying people to do that and run it they don't have to no they, they just give you a code you know let you download it to your your platform of choice that's where we're heading a hundred percent i'm also worried about the industry not innovating enough um it takes so much money now to impress us as gamers it doesn't me I mean, I grew up on, <laughs> you know, Mario Brothers and stuff, and I could play those games right now and have just as much fun playing those as I as I am having, you know, playing Ghost of Tsushima right now. That's just me. I don't need graphics. I don't need that kind of stuff to impress me. It is impressive, and I'm happy to see it. But, you know, would it take in millions of dollars now to produce games? I can easily see the industry, um, and it's kind of there now when you think about it, um, falling into a rut where they don't want to innovate because the gamble is, it's, you know, if you, if it's going to cost you two to four million dollars to gamble and produce a new IP and that IP is not good, then it could tank your studios. You see what I'm saying? You know, between card packs and skins and purchasing stuff like that, I believe that's where the publishers are going to want to make their money not investing in new stories and that's really more what i'm interested in if you could go back in time would you change anything about the way you approached youtube with square one games Whew. this is a very good question um i guess i could give you the the answer that every youtuber would probably tell you right now oh i wouldn't do anything different all the pitfalls and all the successes have led me to where i am right now and all this stuff and I know that sounds like a good answer and I probably should say it, but if I could go back in time knowing what I know right now, uh, I would have never done YouTube. And I know that's probably going to shock you guys after I just said earlier that I love helping people because I do, but the amount of money I've lost, uh, the amount of time I've lost, the amount of time I've lost with family members, friends, uh, birthday parties, the whole nine, because I had to produce content. Yeah, I would go back and change that. Um, that's where YouTube, that's the side of YouTube that viewers don't see. If you're just a viewer, you don't see this part of YouTube. It's the negative side where, oh my God, I got to get a video up, in, you know, tomorrow. People are waiting on it. A game just came out. I got to cover it. I have to cover it. I don't have a choice, you know? Uh, yeah, if I could go back in time, I would get rid of all of that. I would have just, I would have just said, cause it was a lot of you guys know this story. I started YouTube just because, I mean, I didn't have a plan. I just started it. Uh, there was a trophy I was trying to get in battlefield three. I go online. Nobody can tell me how to get it. So I figure it out. I, uh, my roommates also playing the game. I show him how to get it. He's like, dude, you should post a YouTube video and show other people. And I did that and that's it. Like I didn't have a plan and here we are, you know, I've been doing YouTube for almost 10 years. Now it's become such a part of my life 
that I don't even know how to stop it. You know what I mean? Well, I know how to stop it. I just run out of funding, right? Which is kind of where I'm at now. I only have a, I have a limited amount of time left on the internet. Of course, we've got uh, patron support and PayPal support. And as long as that stuff is coming in, I can continue. But if I were to wake up tomorrow and there's no support, I would have maybe a half a year left. And then my personal banking account would be out, not out. I wouldn't be broke, but the money that I set aside to do this thing, I would be out of that money. Um, but if I could go back in time, I would have all my money back. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then when you also factor in, uh, the money that I haven't made while I've been doing YouTube, because every moment that I'm spending on YouTube making content, I'm not making money doing something else. You see what I'm saying? So when you look at your losses in life, when it financial losses, it's not about the money you've lost. It's about the money you could have made while you were losing the money. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Uh, and and that's a very large number. So yeah, if I could go back in time, uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't have never done YouTube. I would have got my Battlefield Three trophy, man, and moved on. <laughs> right? Looking back, now you say, "Well, you're here now." Well, I, yeah, I'm here now. Sometimes life throws you something, and you have to roll with the punches. And I'm here now, and I'm happy that I'm here. But that's not the question. The question is, if you go back in time. Would you change anything? And it would be everything, you know, um, because I wasn't looking at YouTube when I first started as being a career path back then. I didn't even know how you made money on YouTube. I didn't post a video to make money. I just said, you know, that whole help thing kicked in. My roommate was like, man, you can help a lot of people. And I was like, well, that's what I like to do. So I throw the video up. And then the channel was born. Next thing you know, I had 300 subscribers and I had 700, then I had 2000. And I was like, what's going on? And you just roll with it. And you you don't think about the money that you're losing. You don't, you just think about helping people. What's one guy you've always wanted to do, but never got to? Easy, easy answer. Final Fantasy X HD remastered dude i want to cover this game so bad on the channel i mean i want to cover all the final fantasy games i started with the original final fantasy 7 and then i covered the remake but i want to do 8 i want to do 9 i want to do 10 i want to do them all final fantasy 10 was the first game that i got uh with my playstation 2 i bought them together um i remember i looked all night for that for that uh package Finally got it, loved the game. And then of course, when the remaster came out, um, I borrowed it from my friend and uh, said, I'm at, I gotta write a guide for this game. And I actually started writing a guide for it, uh, I don't know, about two years ago, something like that. And if you've played the game, I'm currently at the Via Perifico. Uh, I still gotta, of course, do all the grinding and then can you know, caption all the monsters and do all that stuff. But the campaign is pretty much done. And my estimates, we can probably get through the entire campaign in less than 10 hours, which is pretty freaking fast. Um, but I would love to get that game covered. And after I cover Ghost of Tsushima, uh, if you're a patron supporter, you guys are gonna start voting on the games I play, or at least the AAA games I play. So hopefully you guys will grant me that wish and vote that one in. Uh, but I do have that much of the guide routed already. I still, I'll have to go back through obviously and play it again and probably take some, some better notes, but that's the game that I've always wanted to cover on the channel. How has your research process for RTC guides evolved over time or what does it look like currently? Like we talked about earlier in the old days, I wouldn't do any research. And of course now I do, uh, and that's mainly because of the new PC. Uh, this is something I'm currently working on now, a brand new workflow. Um, because now I'm able to do a lot more with my computer. My computer can actually multitask now, whereas before, even if I wanted to do research, I would have to watch the videos, take notes, and then play the game next. Like now I can actually watch a video, run OBS, take screenshots, have all my, you know, Google slides and, and note taking, you know, uh, browser windows open and play the game all at the same time. So that streamlines everything, right? The new workflow is, I'm still perfecting it, obviously. I've only had a computer for, what, a little over a month now. Um, 
but that's something that's going to evolve over the course of this year but being able to multitask has changed everything so now i'm actually able to research and i guess what i'm saying is i can combine my research process with playing the game at the same time right i got three monitors so i can pull a youtube video up if there's a let's play if i'm following that person to see what their reactions are how they deal with boss fights i can also play along see if i have those same complications but i can do it all in real time plus obviously with um you know the youtube media player you can speed up the video so i can watch that video at two times speed so if their let's play is 10 hours i can watch it in five so the new pc is absolute beast and that's going to make my uh, workflow a lot better but it also helps uh, with the research process not really a question but if you can and are comfortable with it maybe do the q a with the face cam so your viewers can put a face to the voice they've been listening to for years and some of you have been listening to me for a long time and i appreciate it uh, i have no problem doing a face cam I, i'm i'm not against it at all my only issue man is that once you put your face on the internet it's on the internet forever forever and it never comes off no matter what you do no matter how many pictures you delete it's always up there and especially for youtubers man and twitch streamers i've seen so many people's lives get ruined because you know right now if somebody wants to attack my channel they can only attack my videos i don't take it personal you know they just say your content sucks or i hate this part of your video or whatever and it's like they're attacking the video uh but the second i throw my face on a video now they can attack me personally and i can't see your face so i can't attack you personally you know what i mean so then it becomes uneven like right now i can't see any of your faces you can't see mine we're on an even playing field but i don't see that i don't see what benefit i would gain by putting my face on the internet when you guys don't put all your faces on the internet does that make sense like if we could all see each other it would be different but we can't at that point it, it, it's kind of imbalanced like i put myself out there but for what to gain what you see what i'm saying and, and if you've been on the internet for a long time you've seen twitch streamers and youtubers lives get ruined pizza being delivered to their houses doxing all this kind of stuff i try to do my best to avoid all of that but uh there's just no point in me and me doing it at this stage in the game what is your proudest platinum this is a very interesting question because as a guide maker my platinums are my platinum experience is different than yours right i'm routing and optimizing guides so when i give you this answer it's gonna you're gonna be like what that's your that's good that's your proudest platinum but it is and it's actually a platinum i haven't posted yet it's actually ghost of tsushima that will be my proudest platinum and you're probably saying that's crazy Xanavit. that's an easy platinum list platinum trophy list it's so simple you just run around and go to all the icons and pick things up but this is the toughest guide i have ever put together ever over dark souls over bloodborne whatever game you think has been tough right this is my toughest uh experience so it'll be my proudest platinum when i finally post it and it's going to be several months from now probably before i'm able to post it the production alone on this game is going to take probably close to 20 days right just editing and time stamping and uh doing the script and doing the commentary i mean it's it's almost a month's worth of work just that and to route that guide because there's i don't know there's like 500 plus collectibles across like i don't know 15 different categories or some nonsense like that and to route all that stuff into a cohesive playthrough and then optimize it so you're not backtracking imagine how much backtracking you like if you've already got your platinum in ghost of tsushima how much backtracking did you do how many times did you visit the same place multiple oh i forgot to get this wreck i forgot to get this artifact oh i gotta fast travel back here to get this thing right so routing and optimizing this guide for me is going to be the biggest accomplishment ever on the channel and it has nothing to do with the trophy list a lot of people look at the trophy list and they go oh if i had if i had a platinum in that game because it's such a quote unquote hard game 
such a hard list. That's my proudest moment. But that that's not from from my perspective, because I'm routing a guide, I'm making a guide, I'm optimizing a guide. My platinum experience is completely different than yours. Completely different. So even though Ghost of Tsushima seems like an easy platinum, my challenge is how much time can I save you? But I think if you go online right now, people are gonna say 50 to 70 hours. I've even seen 100 hours. But what if I could get it down to 30? 30 hours. That's where my platinum experience comes in. It's how fast can I get it, right, personally? And how fast can I help you get it, right? So that's gonna be my proudest platinum. The day I post episode one of Ghost of Tsushima for you guys, you'll know that that is my proudest platinum. And to take it one step further, the next game that I cover in the future that is crazy to route, has a ton of optimization, has a ton of time saves, that'll become my proudest platinum. If you'd have asked me this um, back in back when Final Fantasy VII came out, I would have said Final Fantasy VII Remake. Because up to that point, that was the one that required the most. I think I spent 600 hours on that. I think I stopped counting at 600 hours. There were, it, it lasted longer than that. And I think it took four months of solid playing that game to get it to where I wanted it. But I got that platinum time down to, I think, 34 hours for a beginner. It could be done quicker. So that was my proudest platinum if you'd asked me back then. But now the most complex game that I'm working on is Ghost of Tsushima. So that one wins. But a year from now, it's going to be whatever the next complex game is. There was once a time it was Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. It had over 400 collectibles, right? And routing it was a nightmare. But those become my proudest moments. After releasing the highly controversial The Last of Us Part 2, where do you think Naughty Dog can go from here? It seemed like you either hated or loved the game. With myself and many other huge fans of the first game not enjoying the sequel, do you think they'll ever revive Uncharted or Jack and Daxter? Uh... I, I, I think they I think they're done with the last of us I think they should just hang that one up I really don't see a future for that franchise I'm not saying they won't produce something but I'm personally done with that now obviously I have a YouTube channel I'll have to cover the next you know installment if they make one but uh if I didn't have a YouTube channel I'll be done with the last of us uh, and believe it or not I've never played Jack and Daxter that's something you guys don't know about. I've never played that. I've, I, I've always wanted to, just never gotten around to it. I've actually never played Ratchet & Clank either. And uh, I actually downloaded the free Ratchet & Clank game the other day. So um, if patrons vote on that game, I'll cover it. But I would love to get in those franchises. So I really can't talk too much about Jack and Daxter because I don't know the story. But I can talk about Uncharted because your boy knows that story really well a lot of you guys found my channel through uncharted videos um some of you know this already but to me uncharted 4 wasn't necessary um it's probably my least favorite of the uncharted games is uncharted 4 i just i just didn't see the point um they did set up the daughter though they did set up the daughter character so I think if they went anywhere with Uncharted, it should be focused on the daughter. Uh, Nathan should be like a background character, you know, father figure, mentor maybe. Uh, but I think it should focus 100% on uh, the daughter. I think the elements they put in Uncharted 4, the stealth elements where you can hide in cover and all this kind of stuff. I, I didn't like that for Nathan. I see why they implemented it because he's older and blah, blah, blah. But I think they should have saved that for the daughter. I think it would have been a great transition, right? Even if you even if you make Uncharted 4 and Nathan's doing the same old, same old, you know, he's not running around getting in bushes. Uh, then you introduce the next Uncharted game and now we're focused on the daughter. I think she should be a stealth character, right? And I said this back in the day. You know, she should be the one hiding in bushes. That would make us feel like it was a completely different experience. Now that we've already played that with Nathan in four, if they go that route with her, if they do, you know, continue that that story, 
it won't it won't it'll feel um it won't feel fresh does that make sense so i personally would have if i were going to make uncharted 4 i would have made it just to set up the daughter character but i wouldn't have introduced anything extra with the the stealth element right i would have saved that for the daughter character um so for me if they if they keep on with uncharted it should be focused on the daughter uh, I mean, think about it. We know that Tomb Raider was a thing back in the day and then basically Uncharted copied that formula, right? W with the male character. But if you create, if you continue the Uncharted franchise with the daughter, now you have a female character that, that could possibly rival Tomb Raider, right? Lara Croft. And I think that would be the direction that you should go, right? Um, but as far as Jack and Daxter, man, I can't, I can't say I haven't, haven't ever played that franchise. And like I said, for the last of us, I think they should hang that one up. I think that one's, uh, at least for me personally, uh, you guys know, I made a video. I, I hated the game. I still do. Um, uh, I would only play it because I had a YouTube channel. Why did I break every controller I own while trying to platinum DS3? And will there ever be a platinum guide for Prey 2017? For the same reason why I almost broke my controller trying to get my platinum in DS3, and I think other players feel the same way, that trophy list was horrible. When you look at the trophy list, it seems easy. But then when you have to do all the offline covenant farming, I think my total platinum run for that game was 26 hours, I think and what was it 40 or 50 percent of that was farming boring farming yeah if you broke your controller trying to get a platinum in that game your boy Xonovitz not judging you uh as far as the uh platinum guy for prey uh, i have no problems covering prey uh if patrons want that when we start voting then then that's the game that i'll play uh, i can tell you right now if you're looking for that guide I'll give you a link below. Hopefully she still has it on her channel. Dormouse 3 covered that game back in the day. Uh, so if there's anybody that I trust to get you through a game other than me, it's her. She has a lot of other guides on her channel. If you guys are into um, The Evil Within, she covered th that game. She's covered a bunch of games on her channel. Full 100% trophy guys, just like mine. She does commentary. She thinks, um, like a beginner when she plays so she can mimic what she, she does the same thing i do right i try to play like a beginner she does too so that you can mimic that play style if you're nervous about the game uh so if you're looking to get that guide now to follow that game now then i'll leave a link below to her channel go check it out uh you know if the patrons vote on it for me to cover at some point in the future then i have no problem uh putting it on this channel firstly congrats on 2k subs mate thank you very well deserved is there a game or franchise that you haven't played yet that you really want to play? Secondly, what is your favorite video or series you have uploaded? Lastly, what are the retro game shops like in your part of America? Keep up the great work, mate. I will. And actually, I follow your channel too. I'm subscribed. I watch all your videos. You keep me uh, update on all the PlayStation Plus, you know, updates and free games and gaming news. So I appreciate your content too. Uh, first question gaming franchise that I really want to play. I'll go with Ratchet and Clank since we talked about it earlier in Jack and Daxter And I think there's a way you can get a really easy platinum in in one of those franchises I think it's Jack and Daxter in like 10 minutes or something. Correct me if I'm wrong uh, I don't know if it's a hack or a glitch. I haven't really watched a video one. I read it on a forum one time But I recently downloaded Ratchet and Clank so I'll go with those games for now Secondly, what is your favorite video or series you have uploaded? I think on the new channel, uh, on the new channel, I would have to go with Dark Souls. I, I don't know. Dark Souls is just, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a good, it's one of my favorite franchises. I think if you're talking about him across both my channels, it's Uncharted, man. I mean, Uncharted is just that franchise that, you know. A lot of you found my channel through Uncharted. A lot of you. That was the first game I played on the PS3. You guys have heard this story before, but some of you have. Uh, Uncharted 1, first game I played. I went, I played it at a friend's house, went the next day, 
and bought a PlayStation 3 with that game. Came home, got 60 something percent of the trophies in a weekend. That was my first platinum, right? I decided, oh, let me just go ahead and collect all these things that keep popping up on the screen. I didn't know what they were. Um, so I think overall across my entire career on YouTube, it would have to be Uncharted. Uh, but for now on this channel, because I haven't finished out the franchise of Uncharted yet, um, I'll go with Dark Souls. Lastly, what are the retro game shops like? To be honest, we don't really have retro game shops, right? Um, we have flea markets, we have uh, pawn shops. I mean, that's really where I've picked up a lot of my collection. Um, my friend of mine did an evaluation on my collection uh, about a year ago. Um, and based on his estimates, it's, a, it's about a $10,000 collection. Um, in terms of what I could sell it for, right? Uh, there's no telling how much I've spent in the collection. And I've sold some things along the way, so, you know. But it's a pretty big collection. But most of that was uh, purchased from pawn shops. And there was actually one, uh, some of you, some of you may not know that this is how it used to be, but a lot of times when you would go to a hotel back in the day, they called them motels back in the day, uh, you could actually rent video games from the, you know, the reception desk, right? And they would give you like a TV in your room and you could rent a console if you didn't have one and you can rent games. And a friend of mine uh, actually found a motel in our area. And uh, it was like a gold mine because they still were sitting on all of these old Nintendo games that they used to rent. And some of them were still in the plastic, guys. They were still sealed, right? Because a lot of times those places would get robbed. You know, somebody would rent a game and then they would just jet. And so they had backup games, you know, on reserve. Smart as a business. And so he found the shop, went in there one day and bought all everything, even the duplicates, bought it all. And I don't know, he spent... Uh, I don't know, $200 or something, but he, he walked out of there. I mean, he was literally buying games for a dollar, $2, $3, and them suckers were sealed, most of them. So he ended up selling me a lot of those, some of the duplicates, and he and I have traded back and forth over the years. And I used to go um, retro game shopping with him a lot back in the day. Uh, but we went to pawn shops. I mean, there was once, there was one time there where we could probably go to like a mall and find a, a game store that had some retro content like the Funko Lands and stuff like that. You guys are aware of those shops. They would have the retro games, but not today. Like if I wanted to go shopping right now for some retro content, it would be very hard to find. We even found a, a library. It, was, it wasn't a library. It was a bookstore, um, but they also sold games. So a lot of times you might, oh, that's just a bookstore, but inside they have other novelty items and they had some games there. So we would find little little gold mines like that around and around the area. And we would go out every weekend and, uh, you know, I would spend a bunch of money, <laughs> you know, buying retro stuff. But uh, it's mainly pawn shops and flea markets now. Uh, it's where you would find the really good stuff. Of course, you can go online to eBay and find them all day long, but they're they're usually priced over overpriced or or priced right. And as a collector, you want to buy lower than that amount. So that's where the the flea markets and stuff would would come into play. The pawn shops. Do you see yourself making more than just guides for games and maybe get into the reviewing parts of the whole thing? Yeah, absolutely. Um, with the old PC. It was very hard for me to produce content because it took so long to render the files. You know, a one hour episode of um, an RTC guide would take eight hours to render, six to eight hours to render. And then you gotta upload that sucker and it's got a process. So it would take a half a day. So any video that you guys have seen on my channel prior to the new PC probably took about 12 hours to post. And then if there was a, a editing mistake, well, then you got to render it again. Now it's a full day. And while that was processing and, and rendering, I couldn't do anything else on my computer. So then I was just wasting time. I don't have to worry about that now. So my goal at this point is to work about five days a week, four to five days a week routing guides. 
and I'll be putting in about 10 to 14 hours a day. Sometimes I hit 10 hours and you say, well, why not do the 14? Well, sometimes I'm answering a lot of comments. Every time you guys leave a comment, I of course have to answer it. And some of the comments are left on videos that I made a year ago, you know, guys I made a year ago. So it takes me like 10 to 15 minutes sometime to get the answer you need because I got to go back and figure out what the heck was going on in that guy. I don't remember it, you know? Um, so between 10 and 14 hours is what I can log now with the new PC. And it's all uh, multitasked hours, meaning for that 10 hours, I can do multiple things. So it's actually better than what I was doing with the old PC. Cause if I put in an eight hour day on the old PC, it was doing one thing, right? One project. And now it's multiple projects. So now the 10 to 14 hours is, um, it feels more than that amount of time because I'm doing more in that amount of time, if that makes sense. Uh, so yeah, the episodes of the dose, which is what you're watching now, these are going to come back this year. I'm going to do topics, more questions from you guys. I'll answer it. When it comes to reviewing games, I don't really like reviews. I, I personally hate reviews. Um, I don't care about putting a score on a game. Um, I think that's silly. I don't, I care about what somebody has to say. So if I, if I, if I come across the reviewer who wants to talk about the game in detail for like 50 minutes, that's what I want to listen to. I don't care about numbers. So if I ever do reviews on this channel, uh, we're not scoring games, right? We're talking about games. I want to know what you think. I want to know why you hated it when I loved it. That's all I'm interested in. Right. Uh, but I think for me, I think reviewing trophy list is something that I can do on my channel. That's unique. Talk about my experience hunting down the trophies. Um, and then we can talk more about that. So maybe I can do a little bit of the, the, uh, the normal reviews for games, talk about my opinions, but also do the trophy list. I think that would be cool for the channel, but I want to do a lot more stuff guys with the dose this year. Uh, now that we have the new PC, so I'll be branching out a lot more and, and, and there'll be more content going up on the channel than just guides. What are the hardest parts of being a content creator? Well, that's a good question. Such as the background work that goes into the guides and balancing that with real life work. Do you ever get to play games casually or are you, are you always thinking, uh, are you always working on guides and do you ever get burnt out and think of giving up? Also congrats on 2k subs. Thank you so much. Ooh, we're going to be here a while. Um, I have a lot to say about this topic. Since you asked, I will tell you the hardest part of being a content creator is the mental struggle of being a content creator. It is not hard work, guys. All we're doing is making videos, right? Even some of these vloggers, I mean, what do they do? They take their kids to the pool one day, they film it, they get 2 million views, right? They get a new pet, new puppy, they carry you along to the store with them, they pick out a few gifts for the puppy, they come home, it's a 10 minute video. Anybody who tells you that stuff is hard, I, I don't know what planet they're living on. I, I watch a lot of YouTube content on, on, on this platform and I don't think any of it's hard. I mean, when you compare what we do on YouTube to, you know, roofing a house in the middle of summer, digging ditches, pouring concrete, going to war, right? Uh, these things are not hard in comparison. There's nothing hard about playing a video game. There's nothing hard about editing. You know, it's just time consuming. But that's it. But that's not hard, right? The hardest part for me is the disconnect between the viewer and the content creator. And I'm speaking for myself here because I'm one of the few channels on YouTube that holds their content to such a high standard that if I'm going to make a career out of YouTube, it needs to be funded by the viewer, right? It needs to come. The money needs to come from the viewer. If I can't get the money from the viewer, then I shouldn't be doing this as a full-time career. That's how high I hold my, my content, the standard I hold my content. That's the mental struggle for me. The fact that I can put five, 600 hours into a project and not get a patron supporter from it or not get a PayPal donation, right? That's tough for me because, you know, we're talking about four or five, 600 hours 
you know, a thousand people watch that series. You know, I can tell by the comments about how many of you got your platinum and I'm not picking on anybody. You asked me the question. I'm just telling you, this is the tough part for me. It's just you as the viewer knowing, oh, this guy probably took 400 hours to make, right? This dude gave me 400 hours of his life so I could get my platinum in a weekend. But then when that doesn't come back to me in an exchange where value is placed on my time, that's very tough for me. It's very tough. It happens with every single game I cover. Every one of them. I'm bummed out when I'm done because all that effort and very little support comes back. But that is the standard that I hold myself to, right? I know I could go out and get a sponsorship and that sponsorship could probably pay me enough to, to take care of me for a whole year. One sponsorship. But that sponsor is not watching my content. You see what I'm saying? I, I, I want I want there to be a synergy between my viewers and myself where they go, hey, man, hey, this dude done gave me 400 hours of his life. Maybe I should maybe I can at least give him a buck. Right. So that he can continue to make this content. That's very tough. You'll never realize it unless you're a content creator. You'll never realize it. And nobody chose this but me. I'm a big boy. I know that I don't have to be here. You know what I mean? At any point, I could have quit. And we'll talk about that in a second. Before I had community funding through Patreon and PayPal, I didn't know anybody, anything. I could have quit at any time, you know? But I think for me now that the, the hardest part is just knowing that, man, I'm going to spend the next 400 hours preparing this guide. And it, there may not, it may not come back to me in any monetary value. But I do it anyway. Because I go back to my the initial question. I love helping people. Even if I get screwed over in the process, I love it so much that I'm willing to spend the crazy amounts of money I've spent to keep this channel going, to not get anything in return. But there is a limit. There is a point where you just can't do it anymore, where you do get so frustrated with the whole process that you, you, you have no choice. It's not even like you want to give up. You're just forced to give up. And that's kind of where I'm at right now. And that kind of goes to another part of your question. Do you ever think of giving up? I don't think of giving up. I just know that that day is coming. If the support isn't there, I have no choice. I can't keep burning through my life savings. You know, at some point you have to just give up, but I don't ever think about giving up personally, like wake up and go, I can't do this no more. I'm just looking at the numbers. I'm looking at my banking account and that's telling me that there's coming a day where you're going to have to give this thing up. So something hard about this, it's just mentally taxing when you put in so much effort and then you get very little back and you can't say that you need help. You can't say that you, you can't come and make a video and say, this is what we need. And this is what I know because then you're e-begging, right? You know, you, you can't, it's like as a content creator, you can't say what you need from your viewers because you're e-begging is a negative connotation with it. Right. But as viewers, and this goes back to what I was talking about with the disconnect, viewers can sit there all day long and say, when are you going to do this? When are you going to cover this game? Why haven't you covered this game yet? And I can't say anything to you. I can't say you're E whatever. You know what I mean? I just have to go, I'm working on it or I'll get to it tomorrow or I'll try to get it done when I can get it done. You know? So the viewers don't always share the same level of passion about getting the content as I do about getting it to viewer. There's a disconnect. It's not balanced, right? Think about it. When you subscribe to my channel, all you had to do was click a red button and maybe click the bell. Maybe I have, I have to spend money. Like I'm on the hook, <laughs> you know, and I've already told you how much I've spent in the history of my time on YouTube. That, at this point, and some people have asked me this, you know, why did you decide to make this a career? It has to be a career. I have to get my money back or try, you know, I have to try to get what I've spent, recoup it. 
just like with any other investment, you have to try to get it back or you have to move on. So I didn't really have a choice. I mean, but to try to do it full time. And like I said, I'm very appreciative of the, the money that's coming in now, because without this money, we're staring down the barrel of about a six to eight month uh, life on the channel. And that's it. It's over. Um, so I'm very appreciative of it. Don't get me wrong, but there's still a huge disconnect between viewers and content creators. And that's because, you know, just 99% of the, the channels, you don't have to do anything. You just watch. But I guarantee you, if you look at your subscription, um, do it right now, pull up in a separate browser, pull up all the people you're subscribed to and ask yourself if YouTube was to lock this content behind a paywall tomorrow. And the only way you could watch the content was to pay a dollar a month. Would you do it? If you're subscribed to a hundred channels, you mean to tell me you're going to pay a hundred bucks a month to watch every channel. I guarantee you that a lot of you are subscribed to channels just because it's free, not because they make good content. And that could even be my channel. You might just be subscribed to me because it's free, not because you think it's actually good content but I care about whether my content is actually good. I can click bait people to watch my content. I could do that. I could throw uh, a crazy thumbnail up there, get people to watch my content. It's easy. It's not like it's hard, but I want my content to actually be good. And I know if people are voting for my content with their wallet, then it's good. The same reason why we pay for games. And if you don't like DLC, you don't pay for it. If you don't like card packs and sports games and blah, 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 you don't pay for it. You vote with your wallet. If you go to the store and there's three microwaves and you like one more than the other two, you don't buy all three, you buy one. You voted with your money. And getting a hundred pennies from my viewers is the toughest thing I've ever had to do. And I've done a lot of things. I've sold, I've sold insurance. I did retail. I mean, I've done a lot of different jobs. I built elevators, believe it or not. Did that when I was in high school. This is the toughest thing I've ever had to do in my, in my existence of breathing on this planet is to, is to get a hundred pennies from viewers. It's the toughest thing I've ever had to do. And based on the numbers, I got a long way to go. And I don't know if I can hold out that long. It's tough. And uh, getting to the other part of your question, balancing that with real life work, I don't have real life work. I quit. I was a freelance graphic designer, web developer. I did that for a long time, loved it. You know, I was making good money. Uh, this kind of ended up becoming a thing. I tried to do part-time work in this at the same time because I was still treating this as like a hobby. The, the job kept interfering with YouTube. YouTube kept interfering with the job. So I was like, I got to do one or the other. You just can't do both. It's not a part-time thing. I have to be all in or all out. And I love helping people. So I, I said, I'm just going to go all in with YouTube and see what happens. And I've been here for the last four years. So I don't have real life work. I'm living off savings. That's, that's the deal. I've made a lot of arrangements in my life to cut my costs, to cut my financing down, to cut my bills down. And I'm, I'm just surviving. That's the plan and see what happens. Right. Um, so I don't really have a balance. This is what I do 10 to 14 hours a day. And I do it because I'm hoping that one day I'll wake up and the love is reciprocated and we can all be happy and we can make gods and follow gods and get trophies. I'm hoping that day comes before I run out of money, before I run out of financing. And then, you know, that's it. Um, do you ever play games casually? Nope, not anymore. If, if I'm playing a game, it has to be to ride a god because it's always about time, right? I got to be getting gods up all the time. The more gods I post, the more potential patrons and PayPal money that could come in to help fund the channel. So I have to keep making gods. Um, do you ever get burnt out or think of giving up? Like I said, I only think about giving up when I'm looking at the Mount Everest I have to climb to, uh, to make this thing work potentially. 
and that is uh that makes you want to give up but i don't wake up on a daily basis just going i can't do this no more i don't like this anymore it's not that it's just the inevitable of knowing that it's probably not going to work you know um that makes you want to give up when you just don't think it's going to pan out so hopefully that answer all answers all your questions i know we got a little deep there and your boy got emotional but you know i'm living it it's tough man um somebody asked me a while back hey man i want to make guys like you you know do i need to get sony vegas do i need to get after effects you know what do i need what kind of programs what kind of microphone and i told him straight up i said you don't need none of that stuff what you need is time that's what you need and that's the one thing that i'm that i've carved out for myself now i'm at a stage in life where i have the time but it's limited what are you looking forward to playing this year what are your plans for the channel? Uh, I'm looking I'm looking forward to playing. Uh, I don't know if I'll get to play it this year, but Cyberpunk, I really want to play that game, but obviously I'm not going to play it in the state that it was in at launch. I don't know where it is now with the patches and updates, but I really like to play that game, but obviously it just depends on what the patrons want, what they vote on. That's the games that I'll play. Uh, what are your plans for the channel? I really want to bring back the dose in a, in a big way. We do, we've already talked about that and uh bring back go retro uh go retro got canceled because i ran into some copyright issues with some of the graphics i was using it really wasn't my fault it was youtube trying to say that they were copyrighted i talked to the owner of the graphics template i was using or that i purchased it from and uh, he said it's not a problem we cleared it up so i can go back to that package now um, but I really would love to bring back go retro and just play old games, man. That's the games I grew up on. A lot of you are older like me. Uh, these are games you grew up on. And some of these games you've never even seen completed before. Cause back when we grew up, they were just too difficult, right? So I would love to do some challenge runs, uh, and just complete games. Just see if I can build up a playlist of retro games that I can just complete. You know, and then maybe add some challenges, some tutorials, and just enjoy retro. Um, I really want to bring back that show. I'll be working on that over the next few months, but um, the dose is ready. Uh, you're watching that now. Um, it's very easy to put together. This one's not. The This Q&A video took a long time, but most of uh, the dose episodes will be five to 10 minutes long, maybe 20 minutes, maybe even longer if you want to treat it like a podcast. I'll be answering questions from you guys. I'll be playing games, demos, and just having a good time, man. But the dose and go retro, they need to be back on the channel this year. Are you planning on doing Demon Souls a remake? Absolutely. That'll be the first AAA game I cover when I get the PS5. I'm still having problems getting the PlayStation 5. Guys, I've spent so many hours online trying to get this thing. I, between the bots, and scammers, and stuff, I can't get it. Um, so I'm gonna have to wait till it hits stores in my area and just go to the store and get one. Um, but from what Sony said, it should be the bottom half of this year. You should be able to find a PlayStation pretty easy. So hopefully I can get one then. Uh, but yeah, that'll be one of the first games I cover. I also want to cover, you know, the Spider-Man games, even the Astros Playroom game. I want to cover that. But Demon Souls, yes, very high on the list. I played that game when it first came out, like two or three weeks after it came out back in the day and got my platinum. Um, so I'm very familiar with the game. I need to play it again to kind of refresh, but I've seen some Twitch streamers play it. Um, some of you guys have, have verified that sorcery is still OP. Like you can four hit bosses and stuff. So um, I'm pretty sure we're going to go with that class uh, when it comes to running that game. But yes, Demon Souls is very high on the list. Favorite from software title. It's a very good question. Uh, it would be the Souls games, or I guess Dark Souls 1 for me. If you're talking about games they've developed. Uh, I was just going through a lot when I ran Dark Souls this past time. Um, so, you know, that, that resonates with me, that title does. But they also published games. I don't know how many games they've published, but I know that they published a game called 3D Dot Game Heroes back on the PS3. And I remember a guy I used to work with, he's a good friend of mine, um, uh, had the game, played it, told me about it. 
I then got it, took it home. And it was one of those games that when it was time to go to work, I was still playing it. Like I knew I had a 30 minute drive to my job, but I would play it until like 25 till and then I would scoot out and send me speed to get to work. And very few games make me do that because I'm very responsible. I'm an on time person. You know, I like to get there even earlier than I'm supposed to be. But that was the game, 3D Dot Game Heroes. It's kind of a Zelda clone, but the art style is cool. The story's cool. It's just a fun game. So depending on how I read that question, it could be um, games they've developed or games they've published. And if they've if you're talking about publishing, it would be 3D Dot Game Heroes uh, developed. It would be Dark Souls 1. What has been your favorite game to prepare a guide for? Um, that's an interesting question because if you say prepare a guide for, uh, I always like the games that take the least amount of time. That's my favorite because I want to post content. So if I look at that question with that context, it will be games like Road Bustle and like, you know, Metagal or Metagirl or whatever that game was and Chickens on the Road. I mean, those are my favorites because they take no time to produce. I mean, if that's the context of the question, but if you're asking me, what's my favorite game to prepare a guide for, uh, that I know is going to help gamers more then it would probably be uh, bloodborne, um, Sekiro, because those games, I think even compared to the dark souls games, people will say that those games are tougher because of the mechanics, right? With Bloodborne, you really don't have a shield. I think you can get a wooden shield in that game or something, but obviously it's garbage. It's kind of a, a troll from the developers. Uh, and then with um, Sekiro, you know, people are nervous about that being a more high impact, energetic game. Um, you know, try to go in there and they're nervous about blocking and pairing and all that kind of stuff. So it was very, fun for me to put that guide together and show that you don't actually have to do a lot of that stuff. You can just play smart. So depending on which context you're asking that question, I obviously love games that take me no time to produce. A lot of people ask me, why are you covering freaking chickens on the road, bro? Like give us some more bloodborne. And it's like, man, I need to break. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't necessarily get burnt out. Uh, but man, after you, after you cover a game like Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order and you've been in it for 45 days or however long it took me to get that guy together, I think it was less than that, but you get my point. Me have to just like, yeah, take a break, man. And, uh, so those are my favorite games to cover because they're, they're quick, they're quick. And then it kind of sets me up mentally to cover the next rough game, like Ghost of Tsushima, like a big game. Hardest and easiest platinum guides you've made for the channels. What are your favorite old school retro games? Um, well, we just talked about the easiest platinum guides, you know, chickens on the road, road bustle. What is it? Metagal, I believe those type of games, you know, the, the 15 to one hour platinums, they're always the easiest to make. Uh, the hardest, some of you are going to think bloodborne Sekiro, but it's not, I'm telling you the hardest game is Ghost of Tsushima. Even though it has an easy trophy list, it's the hardest game I've ever had to make a platinum guide for because of the routing and optimization. So that's the guide obviously you guys haven't seen yet, but I would have to go with that one as my answer. Uh, because I haven't made that guide yet, it would be Final Fantasy VII Remake. Uh, what are your favorite old school retro games? Oh boy. Uh, I could speak on this. This could be a whole video within itself. So let me just give you a few Contra first off. I'm not saying it's my favorite like retro game of all time. I don't even know if I've ever like solidified a list for retro. I probably should, um, but it's tough, but Contra Contra is one of those games I could play every day. Like every single day I could wake up and play Contra. It never gets boring to me. It never gets old. It's fun every single time. And this is all of them. One, two, doesn't matter. Three. In fact, when I used to go to my uh, my friend's college, we would play Contra. It was the first thing we did. I'd walk in. Hey, what's up? How's everybody? And we'd sit down and run it and beat it. And it happened every time. And I would go down there, you know, not every weekend, but a lot, a, you know, a lot on the weekends. 
and we'd run it, you know, play it. Sometimes we'd go through all three. And to this day, you know, he lives about 45 minutes from me. I'll go to his house. We can run some Contra, big dog. I'm like, yeah, man, <laughs> you know, and we run it. Um, it's, 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 I don't know. Contra is just one of those games, man. And it was, it was tough growing up playing that game. Like I could never beat it without the 30 man code. I thought it was impossible. You know, the Konami code. And now I can run it. No hit. I can run it. You know, it's not, it's not even a pro. I can beat it with all the weapons. I can beat it with all the weapons, no deaths. Right. Um, but definitely Contra, you know, you got your Zeldas, um, out of all the Zeldas, a link to the past, man. Jeez. I remember. Uh, here's a story for you guys. I remember uh that game and NBA Jam. I remember going to the beach playing NBA Jam. I thought it was just magical. Like this game is magical. And I remember seeing it for the first time. There was a line down the boardwalk at the beach of people just waiting to play. It was NBA Jam and Mortal Kombat that was out in street fighter i mean people that this is what you played when you went to the arcade these three games lines out the door but i remember when those two games hit the console like you could play them nba jam you could buy it and a link to the past you could buy it and our parents had given enough uh, given us enough money to buy one we wanted both we were like well let me get nba jam and let my brother get you know Link to the past, but they were like, no, you can only get one. And back then, SNES games were, you know, quite expensive. But we could only get one. So we went to the store with my cousin, and he also wanted NBA Jam. We wanted NBA Jam, but we wanted Zelda as well. You know what I mean? He didn't really care too much about a link to the past, but we did. So we were like, hey man, we'll get NBA Jam you get a link to the past and we'll just you know we'll we'll act like we'll basically share them you know what i mean so anytime you want to play nba jam man just ask for it you know it's not a big deal you know and we conned him into getting a link to the past even though he didn't really want it and then what we did is we went to his house actually that day um went to his house to spend the weekend and we were going to play NBA Jam all weekend, but then we had two games. So we were like, hey, man, let's just try a link to the past. Let's just see what's up. You know what I mean? So we spent the whole weekend just constantly telling him, let us play, man. Let's just play it. Let's just beat it. Let's just beat it, man. So we ended up beating uh, a link to the past uh, over the course of maybe two weekends. And then we just kept the NBA Jam. <laughs> Anytime he wanted to play, he had to come to our house. We never gave it to him. So it was it was quite a, a con we pulled on him. So we got to basically play both games, but we only had to pay for one. We were crazy back then. But, uh, you know, then you got your Mario's. I mean, those are always classics. Mario games. You know, Mike Tyson's Punch Out. I love that game. I mean, I could go on and on and on. If you guys want a whole retro episode of the dose man i'll hook you guys up i love retro games but you know those are the ones i could think about or tell you guys about in this q a video but let me know if you guys want to hear more about my retro gaming days i got tons of stories your content is pretty much top tier in terms of video production commentary helpfulness etc as much as i love your guides i feel as though you've kind of dug yourself a hole in terms of only putting out trophy and achievement guides or walkthroughs which I'm sure you can agree are pretty niche topics. Absolutely. Uh, do you ever feel as though that uh, this type of content or the type of content you make can be creatively restrictive? Uh, do you ever want to branch out and make other types of videos such as reviews, multiplayer, commentary, etc.? Regardless of what you say, I'll keep watching your content no matter what you put out. I remember when I was big into trophy hunting, your Uncharted guides and countless others were lifesavers. Hope you uh, been doing good despite the virus that shall not be named and staying healthy and happy. Yeah, I've been doing really well. Um, good question. I think we've talked about this a little bit. I do want to branch out now that I have the new PC and I can actually produce the content. Um, I do want to make, you know, more, you know, I guess various types of content using the dose. The dose is really cool because I can, because I can do anything with it. You know, I can demo games i can run multiplayer with you guys i can do q and a's whatever right 
And then of course with Go Retro, we can just get into more specific content with uh, retro games. I can do completion runs, challenge runs, stories. But yeah, I definitely want to get out there and do a lot more stuff. Um, but I want it to be interactive. So I'm going to be feeding off of, you know, what you guys are saying as, as viewers and stuff like that, especially with the dose. If you guys say, Hey, there's a new demo coming out next Tuesday. I'll play it. You know, if you say, Hey, I really want to know about your retro days, tell, tell us some more stories. And I, that's what I'm going to cover. Right? So I'm one of the few channels on YouTube that still goes with the whole interaction thing. So it's really about how much you guys want to get involved. You guys run the show, you know, I'm here, you know, but, but I, 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 I tend to uh, post content based on what I think you want to see. So the more interactive you guys are with the channel, the more content you'll get, and it'll be more specific to what you're looking for. How did you get into trophy hunting and why did you decide to do guides? I think I talked about this a little bit earlier and some of you have already heard this story cause you follow my old channel. But I had a friend who bought a PS3, uh, but he had it for about a year and we kept telling me about this game. I was working at a gaming store. He was one of my customers. He kept telling me about this game. You got to play this game. I don't even have a PS3. You know, I didn't have the money to get one. I was currently at the time I was getting out of debt. So all my money was going towards student loans and the whole nine, right? Car payments. And, um, he's like, you have to play this game. So I went over to his house, he fired it up and it was inside of his bedroom. He was married, he had kids, but it was inside of his room. And it was probably, I don't know, five or six o'clock. I was eating dinner with his family. I was really good friends with his family. And uh, he fired it up and I started playing Uncharted. He's like, you gotta play this game. And I started playing this game, guys. And the next thing I know, it was like 10 o'clock, something late and when I tell you that I was like family with these people, you know, they were going to bed behind me. Him and his wife were going to bed, right? I'm sitting at the foot of his bed playing this game. I don't even realize what time it is and that it's so late and how disrespectful I'm being in their room while they're trying to go to sleep. They don't care. I mean, I've, I had stayed over there before with other friends. It was just like a, it's one of those houses where like one of those families that just invites everybody in, you know, really loving family. So I was like, dude, let me leave. I started, started to cut the game. He was like, nah, I mean, you can play all you want. If you stay here all night, if you want to, it doesn't bother us. But of course I left. But the next day, man, even though I was trying to get out of debt and all this kind of stuff, I was like, bump, I got to, I have to play this game. I got to play it. I got to beat it. So I bought a PlayStation three, went home, uh, took the weekend off, played it beat it, enjoyed it. And when I was done, I had like 60 to 70% of the trophies. And I really didn't even know what the trophies were because prior to that I had sold insurance and I was out of the gaming. I didn't play games for like a year. And, um, I just, I just didn't know, man, I wasn't cultured. And so when I went to work the next day, I talked to him, I was like, I beat it. And I was like, but what are these things that keep popping up on my screen, bro? That I don't understand. Like, and he told me, he's like, they're just little, you know, little accomplishments you make in the game. The developers have little challenges and they call them trophies and you can get a platinum. I was like, oh, what? <laughs> and he told me, and you know me, I'm a little overachiever. So I said, well, I need to get that. He said, like, well, there's really nothing for getting it. It's not like you get any money or anything. And I was like, it doesn't matter. All right. That, if that's something that developers have challenged me to do, then I want to do that. So I went home, put some more time in and and finish it up and I've been trophy hunting ever since. So it's because of uncharted one got me into trophy hunting. And then I decided to make guides because I was playing, um, battlefield three. We talked about this too. And I think it's called, so you want to be a wingman or something like that, the wingman trophy. And it was very mysterious as to how it actually popped in the game. Like even if you got it, a lot of people back then didn't really know like what they did to get it. It was very, it was just a weird trophy and I figured it out. And then my roommate was also playing the game. We bought it at the same time. And that was one of the achievements he was playing on Xbox. And that was one of the achievements he didn't have. So when he came home from college, I said, Hey man, let's go into your room. I know exactly how to get this thing. I've been working on it all day. He's like, cool. So I went in there and I sat beside of him and he played. 
And I just told him exactly what to do step by step. You know what I mean? And he followed it step by step and got it on his first try. And it was just this magical moment where like, this works. You know what I mean? Like teaching somebody exactly how to get this, it worked. And then he was the one that suggested that I should put it on YouTube. I really wasn't even that familiar with YouTube at the time. I mean, I knew it was a platform, but like, I just didn't know how it worked. And so he helped me get a YouTube channel started and, and, uh, boom, I posted it and then, uh, posted another one. And then both of us started posting and we covered battlefield three, pretty much all the trophies. I think not all of them, but most of them. And then we just kept going from there. And he helped me run the channel for a while. And then I think when dark souls, no, not dark souls, dark siders two came out. He left the channel because he wanted to spend more time doing his college thing, which was fine. And then I just decided to keep going and, uh, I'm still here. So, um, yeah, uncharted one and battlefield three. How excited are you about the next God of war and horizon forbidden West? And do you think we need another uncharted game? I'm very excited about the new God of war and horizon. Man, I loved Horizon uh, back in the day. Uh, I don't think, I'm trying to think that I, I don't think I covered that on the channel, did I? Yes, I did cover it on the old channel. It wasn't an RTC guide. It was just regular trophy and achievement guides. Uh, but I loved that. I actually bought it uh, this past Christmas. I bought Horizon Zero Dawn with all the DLC. And uh, if the patrons vote on that game, I'll cover all of it. I think there's 70 trophies or something 75 trophies or something but yeah that game is phenomenal and then of course god of war i mean come on that game's amazing i did an rtc guy for that on the old channel but without commentary because at the time uh it was very hard for me to do commentary uh one because i had to do live commentary that's that's where i was at in life at that particular moment i had to do live commentary and I couldn't do live commentary with Kratos and his boy talking all the time. It was very hard for me to do commentary. So it's an RTC guy, but there's no commentary, which I hated to do. But like I said, at the time, that was all I could, that was all I could pull off. I would love to go back and redo that for this channel with commentary. And then of course, when the new game comes out, I would love to cover that one as well. And Forbidden West, just phenomenal games. As far as another Uncharted game, I talked about this earlier. I'm cool with it as long as they go with the daughter as the main character. Um, I'm down for having the, the the rest of the gang in there as well, but they need to be minor characters, secondary characters. Uh, I think the focus should be on the daughter. If they can pull that off, then I'm cool. If they do another Uncharted game and it's focused around Nathan, I mean, obviously I'll cover it because I have a YouTube channel, but I'm personally not going to be as invested in it. What motivates you to create guides and support the trophy hunting community? And what is your end game and hoping to achieve from your passion of work? I mean, I love helping people. You know, a lot of YouTubers say that, man, I would do this even if I didn't make any money. Meanwhile, they're sitting on a million dollars or a bunch of ad revenue or a bunch of sponsorship deals. So it's hard to gauge if what they're saying is actually true. Uh, for me, you know, I, I've done this for years for very little money, if not for free. Um, so when I tell you that I do it out of the love of it, it's no joke. I really do. But the end goal is to make it a career and it has to become a career for it to continue. This is not something I can do while I try to balance another career. Like if I were out working a 40 hour a week job or something like that, there's no way I could do. I'm not saying I couldn't make guides, but I definitely couldn't make, you know, 40 or 50 a year. Uh, back when I was trying to have a job and YouTube, I think I would get eight up a year, eight, that was it. So, you know, it depends on how much output the community wants, but, uh, the end game is to make it a career. I don't think I'll ever fully walk away from YouTube. I think I'll always put something up, but, um, you know, it definitely, uh, I mean, think about it like this. Think about how fast I answer your comments. This is a prime example. So you guys leave a comment, 15 minutes later, you get a response six hours later, right? Now some of you never get a response and that's only because YouTube doesn't show me your comment. I don't know why, 
but every so many comments they won't show it to me i have to go into the community tab or not not the community tab but the um the comments portion of my back office to find your comment this is why sometimes i respond to you like two weeks later it's because it, ne it, it never notified me on my phone youtube didn't uh but there are times where this is something nobody knows but there's times where you guys will send me a comment and i'll be asleep and my phone will vibrate and i read the comment while i'm asleep you know well not while i'm asleep i'm gonna wake up but you get what i'm saying i'm sleepy man read the comment and i will get up come into my office answer your comment and then go back to sleep because i know that you're sitting at home on a saturday at like two maybe you got the weekend off this is what's going on in my brain right this person this might be the only only day they can gain they're waiting on this day and, and i know based on your question you can't you can't progress until i give you the answer right so i get up out of bed i i'll come in here and i sleep at all different times during the day so even though you might send me a comment at 2 p.m thinking oh he's awake i, I might have just went to sleep you know and so there's no way i could do that if i had a job you know there's just no way i mean you hit me up on a a, a comment at you know 10 o'clock in the morning i just walked into work i'm not even reading your comment potentially until after five and then i'm probably going to be too tired to to respond right away and i'm spending about two hours a day right now answering comments so there's no there's no way i'm going to want to answer two hours of comments when i get home from working an eight to 11 hour day at my job depending on whatever it is i do so you know it has to become a career or it has to just drastically change i don't know how else to explain it but it's really not up to me anymore man I, i'm putting in the work i've put in the time i'm putting in the effort and you've heard every person who's ever had some successful speech if you put in the time you know you get rewarded we'll see you know I might be the only one who it doesn't come back to and that's fine uh, but at least i'll know what to do next right uh but yeah the the end goal is the end goal is to help the trophy and achievement hunting community so much that they see the need to help me and it becomes a 50 50 balanced relationship right now it's not you know it's not balanced at all and um that again that goes back to to what's so mentally taxing about the whole thing um but yeah it i want this to become a career and i want all of us to be happy you know uh, i want i want you guys to be donating very little but as a group it ends up being what i need you know to continue and you know for you it's just a cup of coffee you know a month and you know, I, a lot of you will tell me why well, I don't have any money. And some of you don't, some of you are hit, you know, the COVID thing and you're not, you're not even gaming right now. You have no gaming budget because all your money is going toward bills. Look, I'm not talking to you. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to make you feel guilty because I, I, I was at a time in my life where I didn't have any money, you know? And so I know what that feels like, but I am talking to the people who have a gaming budget. You know, you're spending $60 a month on games. You're spending $40 a month. You're spending $20 a month. It's like, what's an extra dollar? You know, spend an extra, add one more dollar to your gaming budget. If a thousand people added one more dollar to their gaming budget, I could be full time. All the stress and the mental, whatever I've been going through for, for nine and a half years would suddenly be lifted and I could breathe a little bit, you know? Um, so that's the end goal is to connect with enough trophy and achievement hunters that understand that for them to get a guide from me, it takes all of my time. And that's what I'm hoping happens before time runs out. Do you have any other passions other than video games? Actually a lot. Um, I play a little bit of music. I can, I can strum a guitar. I'm not the best. I, you know, I had a friend of mine teach me a little bit and then I learn on my own. Um, but I do like to, you know, dabble in the music world a little bit. Um, I love music in general, uh, movies, big movie fan. Uh, some of you know this already, but I love watching documentaries. I watch a documentary every day, every single day, 
you're probably saying, well, how do you do that if you're routing guides as much as you say you are? I just have it in the background. I can multitask. My brain is pretty good about that. So just something in the background. A lot of times when I play these games, it's muted. I'm not even listening to the game because uh, you don't have to do that to route guides. And I just love absorbing knowledge. I like to hear different perspectives. Um, uh, let's see. I am an artist. I haven't I haven't drawn in a long time. But man, I used to draw all the time. Back when I was in high school, we had to do uh, weekly, like every Friday we had to turn in an art project. And that was our only grade in the class, was every Friday you turned in an art project and you know, at the end of the year, semester, or whatever, that's how you got graded. And I was the only art student that had a perfect score. I, I, I left that class with a 100, like an A, A plus, or I don't, I don't know what it is in your particular school or college or whatever, but we graded like on a A to F scale. And then uh, if you had a hundred, you, you, you basically had an A plus, but it was just, it was still considered an A. Um, but I was very proud of that. Um, Cause he would challenge you. My art teacher would challenge us every week to, you know, he would give us a topic. Or I guess um, he might say a comic book character or a video game character. And then you had to draw that. You had a week to draw it. And, you know, there was some crazy ones too, like fruits and vegetables and stuff like that. I mean, you know, <laughs> um, some stuff that you really didn't want to draw. But I, I had I had a perfect score in that class and I loved it. Um, I won several, um, I guess, art festivals, I won awards. I, you know, put my stuff in the contest. Um, I did a mural for the school I was in, you know, we had a brand new cafeteria built and they wanted like a mural in there for like school spirit. And I was chosen to help out with that. So that was cool. So yeah, man, anything creative, anything uh, I paint, I mean, you name it. I love uh, being very creative. So I, I guess that's why I love YouTube so much because it allows me to, to edit, which is another passion of mine is editing videos uh, and being creative. So yeah, if it's creative, man, I love it. Did you like Cyberpunk 2077? Will you make a guide on The Witcher 3? Will you cover all the Tomb Raider games, Batman games as well? How is your merchandise coming along? Could you make your channel profile picture red? It would look really good. Square One Games with red. A lot of questions. So the first one, do you like Sky, uh, Cyberpunk 2077? Haven't played it yet. We talked about this earlier. I kind of refuse to play games at this point, guys, that I know are gonna be an absolute buggy mess when they drop. And as gamers, you should know these games. Like I knew Cyberpunk 2077 was gonna be a mess before it ever hit the market. And I'm, I'm, I'm kind of confused as to why some gamers didn't think it was gonna be a buggy mess. Maybe it's because They've done big projects like that in the past, but come on, man, with a game that big, I'm, I'm just surprised that other people were surprised that it was so buggy when it came out. So I haven't played it yet. I'm sure I would like it when I eventually get to play it, but have not played it yet. Uh, will you make a guide on The Witcher 3 if patrons want it? Uh, the one thing we have to consider when we when we um, make big guides like that, and we're, we're seeing this now with Ghost of Tsushima, it's very tough to make these big guides because they take so many months to produce. And while I'm making those guides, I could have made five AAA guides, right? Like in the time it's going to take me to get Ghost of Tsushima done, I could probably get Uncharted 2, Uncharted 3, Uncharted 4, and Lost Legacy done in the same amount of time. You see what I'm saying? So it really just depends on what the patrons want if they want Witcher 3 and it takes me two months to get it done then you know that'll be the content for the channel um, but that's just the one thing we have to take into consideration uh, I, yeah heck yeah I want to cover the Tomb Raider games I covered uh, them on the old channel not the newest one uh, I think maybe I only covered the first one I can't remember but no those games are phenomenal I would love to get those up on the channel too it's like, would you rather have Witcher 3 or the whole Tomb Raider franchise? Because I guarantee you I could get the Tomb Raider franchise done in the same amount of time I can get one game done. 
so that's the drawback right um if i ever get to the point on on uh, through community funding where i have more than what i need per month i would love to hire a staff people that i can train people that i can offboard some of this workflow to and then you can probably get some guides up really quick um but for right now man i do everything on the channel i don't have an editor i don't have an editor i don't have a team of people that run my social media um i don't have a team of people that does my marketing it's just me i do everything from start to finish so yeah i would love to cover all these games but it's just finding the time to do it you know that's the tough part um how is your merchandise coming along it will launch this year my plan was to launch it uh, before I started this new channel, but time ran out. And once I started this channel, now you have to post. Now you got to get content up. So there's been no time to go in and um, get the merchandise done. But with the new PC, I can actually get work done a little earlier now. And probably in about a month or two, I'm going to go in and, um, and get the merchandise ready for you guys. I've already found a supplier the the prices are reasonable you guys are going to be able to get t-shirts for 20 to 25 bucks and the channel myself will still make enough money off of that to handle returns and stuff like that because i have to put aside a lot of that money for returns you know some of you guys might get the wrong size or you just might want to refund in general that has to come out of what i make and then i have to pay them to handle all of the mailing for me and the customer service and then I got to pay taxes and you know, so there, it's reasonable to where if you guys are paying 20 to $25 for a shirt, that there's enough there for me to handle everything on my end to just to get you the merchandise. And then obviously the rest can go into fun in the channel. So yes, merchandise needs to be a thing. A lot of you guys have been asking for it and they do a lot of stuff, guys, uh, framed posters, um, you know, coffee mugs, t-shirts, polos. I mean, they got it all. So it should be a pretty good uh, place for us to start with merchandise. Uh, as far as changing the profile picture to red, it'll probably never happen only because branding is so important and people get to know your little YouTube icon and people have gotten to know mine. It's blue with the Square One Games logo and that's in white. And so you really don't want to change that for marketing purposes, but I will be offering merchandise with my logo in all the colors in fact um the way that i'm how do, should i should i tell you guys this now mm, or should i save it because mm, it's kind of unique but just know that i'll be offering my logo in all the colors with merchandise i'll leave it at that for now but once we get into merchandise it'll make sense um why i'm choosing the different colors but if you would like to get uh, the Square One Games logo in red. Uh, once we get merchandise, you're more than welcome to do that. I'll have it in red with a red background and a white logo, and then I'll have it inverted with a white background and a red logo. What's your job in the real world? If you don't have one, where does your income come from? I don't have a job in the real world. Like I said, I've been working since I was 15, uh, helping that farmer. Uh, and then uh, once I started making YouTube videos, I try to do some part time work and do the YouTube thing and the job at the same time. And the part time work led to a full time job. And then the YouTube wasn't working out anymore. So it's just impossible to do this and have a job at the same time. It has to be one or the other. So currently I'm just living off of savings and, uh, you know, the money that I've accumulated over the years I've set aside. Um, four years ago, I set aside a sum of money and, you know, I had a little bit of patron support back then. And so I've just been balancing that sum of money with, with community funding. And as long as this money doesn't run out, I can continue to a certain point. Um, like I said, if I were to lose all my patrons tomorrow and nobody donated through PayPal, it would just end it that I might have a half a year and then that would be it because it's just so expensive. Ubisoft portrays an image of Templars as the bad guys in the Assassin's Creed video game series. Do you feel they are bad guys or since the series is written from the perspective of an assassin, you are forced to play as an assassin and thereby unwittingly sympathize uh, with the assassin's cause? 
in short, are the Templars or assassins fighting for the betterment of humanity? That's a very good question, man. Um, it's been a long time since I've played this franchise and I haven't played all the games in the franchise. I, I think I, I mean, I've played one through four, right? Black Flag was the last one I played, I think. And I, I covered two of those games, I believe on the old channel, but it's been a very long time. I do know that they set it up to, you know, to, to portray the Templars as bad guys, but that's the good thing about a good story, right? is when you you know who's supposed to be the bad guys but you can you can side with them you see where they're coming from right in the grand scheme of things the assassins think they're doing correct but so do the templars so they're both good and they're both bad and i think if you really want to write a good story that's how you do it i mean is darth vader bad right or can we see how he evolved into darth vader especially when you go back and watch the the prequels, right? Is it is it all his fault necessarily? Right? Did he just wake up one day and just decide to, you know, <laughs> run an empire? Right? So we can side with him. We can see it from his point of view. Another good example is Batman and Joker. Right? So we want to think Joker is the villain. Or we want to think that. But there's just as much context there for Batman being a villain. Right, and they point it out all the time in the comics and even in the movies, right? Like Batman's constantly breaking into people's houses and you know, museums or whatever it is he's doing, breaking and entering, which is illegal, but he's a hero. So it's that dynamic, right? And then the Joker's always pointing it out. He's like, at least I do it legit, right? At least I know that I'm breaking and entering and doing un un unlawful things, right? So it just depends on on the, the writer and how they portray their characters. And I think that Ubisoft does a good job with that. I don't know where the franchise is now, to be honest with you. You know, I always thought the coolest part about the Assassin's Creed games was the real world events. A lot of people didn't like that. A lot of people hated it. You know, they would get sucked back into the real world and they'd have to do some stuff and they didn't like I love that part of it. And when they stopped with that, I don't know if they done that with um uh, the games I haven't played. I don't think they did, but, uh, I like that. I loved it when they took us out into the real world and kind of was blending those two, um, timelines together. Right. Um, but to fully answer your question, I would have to really get deep into the story again. And I'm just so far out of it right now, but I think you get what I'm saying. They're both right. And they're both wrong. And even though you're playing as the assassins and you should side with the assassins, right? That's what, that's what you think you should do. If you look at it in the grand scheme of things, you you're doing wrong at the same time you're doing right. Because from the other point of view, they're in the opposite, right? It's the same way with, you know, Batman and Joker. When you're watching Batman do heroic things, you're also watching him do unlawful things. So it depends on how you are viewing it right determines how you think about batman why did you leave your old channel which had more subscribers i'm about to hit you guys with some crazy truth right here so 50 percent of my viewers are not subscribed 50 percent are not subscribed so if you go back and you look at my dark souls one or dark souls two scholar of the first sin uh Roadie completion series. I think episode one has like a thousand views or something. That means in the grand scheme of things, half, half of those viewers are not subscribers. And after they watched that video, they didn't subscribe. When you really understand subscriptions on YouTube, when you look at it from the standpoint of a content creator, at least from my point of view and the business model that I've chose, which is put, put the viewers first, and then hope that they, uh, you know, come back to you with a hundred pennies, with a dollar at least. When you do it like that, like I've done, the subscriber count means nothing. Likes, favorites, views don't mean anything. I could get a million views tomorrow on a video, but because I haven't monetized that video with ad revenue or a sponsorship or an endorsement, it's just a million views. 
it's just a million views, right? One view and a million views from my channel is the same. It's just a view. But now if, if I monetize my work through AdSense or sponsorships or whatever, then the number of subscribers I have would mean everything because I can use the number of subscribers I have as leverage to deal with ad company, you know, ad campaigns and stuff like that. But I don't do that on my channel. I know that if I want to get a hundred pennies, one dollar from a viewer, they have to be first. I have to give them quality content. I have to answer their questions as fast as I can. I have to be in those con and look, I've always done this. I mean, I've done this before I was ever trying to make this a career. So it's just part of my DNA. It's not something I'm turning on just because I want to make this a career. It's just who I am. But if I have, if I ever, um, if I'm ever going to get lucky enough to get a hundred pennies from a viewer, they have to be first. And look, you, you can bookmark my, I mean, go up in your browser right now and just bookmark my channel, go to my main channel and bookmark it. You might as well be subscribed at that point. You don't even have to click the button. Just bookmark my channel every day. Click the bookmark. See if I posted something new, watch it, do whatever you want to do, like favorite, whatever, leave a comment. You don't even have to be subscribed. The subscription thing is a joke. It's a joke. You have to really trust your content. You have to really trust it to make it for free and then let people donate against it. You have to really trust that it's good. And if it's not good, then it, it won't come back in the form of, of monetary gain and you'll be forced to quit, which is the position I'm in right now, because it has to be good. You have to be on every single day. It's a very high standard, right? So subscriber count to me means nothing. Views don't mean anything. Like dislike rating doesn't mean anything. I know I talked about that in the post. It doesn't mean anything to me. It means something to a new viewer. New viewer comes to your channel. They want to know how many subscribers you got, how many views you got. You know, do you have a million view video? What's your most popular video? You know, they care about your accent, <laughs> stuff like that. These are things I don't think about, you know, I'm worried about my like dislike rating because I'm worried about the new viewer coming in and seeing it and how important it is for them. I personally don't care. I care about what you have to say about the content. Same thing goes for reviews. I care about what the person has to say, not about the number. So I hope that answers your question. This channel right here could blow up tomorrow and have a million subscribers. But if I were getting 20,000 views and my Patreon was still sitting where it is right now. Is it really successful? No, it's not. It's not successful. It's actually really, really bad. All right. In the grand scheme of things, it's really a horrible channel from what I'm trying to get out of it, what I'm trying to put in it and what I'm trying to get out of it from that measurement. It's a horrible channel, right? So it depends on what you're looking for. Most people wouldn't have walked away from 18,000 subscribers. I did it like it was nothing. You see what I'm saying? Because all these numbers don't matter. The only thing that matters to me is whether you guys are getting your platinums and hopefully that's coming back to me in the form of monetary gain so I can continue to give you platinums, <laughs> right? I don't need these platinums for me. I already know how to get them. You see what I'm saying? I'm doing this for you, for the community. But the, the community has to see it that way. They have to go, yeah, man, if this dude's spending 14 hours a day, I mean, yeah, I'll give him a hundred pennies, right? So yeah, it's a very long answer to a very simple question, but I would do it again in a heartbeat. I would open 60 channels and shut 59 down to get to my goal. Whatever I need to do to climb Mount Everest with this thing, I'm willing to do until it's impossible. And then you just have to stop, right? I mean, if you're a bodybuilder, you love lifting weights. You can do it until you pop a bicep. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then no matter how much you want to go in there and lift, you can't. And that's that's what I'm looking at. There just is going to come a point where I can't. But until that day comes, I'm firing on all cylinders. I'm trying to make it work, right? But the subscriber count 
does it mean anything? So that's it for the Q and A. Uh, I've said a lot in this video. I have no idea how long it is because I've just been sitting here talking for a long, long time. Um, but if you guys want to do another one of these or you want to ask questions, you want to get more specific, I'm down. That's what the dose is all about. I want to do more episodes, um, but I really hope you guys have enjoyed this. I've said a lot. Leave your comments below. And uh, that's it, man. Thank you so much for the support. See you in the next one. Be good.